Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. My name is Scott Morgan, Rock Motor City Mad Mouth, our Memorial Day edition. Before I introduce everybody, I want to let everybody know that uh, we're obviously talking about the three-day weekend, and each of my guests are going to have an opportunity to go out there and talk about what means the most to them here on Memorial Day weekend. So have a great show lined up. Hope you guys can stick around for us. I guarantee there'll be a lot of memories, a lot of nostalgia. But with that said, okay. I want to introduce my panel real quickly. George Eichhorn, uh, live from Detroit. Nice to be here. Thanks, Scott. J.B. Ellis, tell them where you're from. Brooklyn, New York. There you go. And uh, Sideline Sports. And there you go, Steve Ballesteri. Yeah, I'm down here in southwest Florida, right outside Fort Myers. Yeah, uh, via Boston. Okay. Via Boston. There you go. And don't miss it. There you go. No, we can never forget that here. After all, we're talking anytime we talk about uh Patriots and oh yeah uh, sort of thing. But before I we do get, miss that part of it, that but well he does, does a heck of a job for patsfans.com and you'll get more info. Before we go any further in the show though, I think all of us definitely want to pay our respects to the uh students that lost their lives over in that mass shooting in Texas. So, you know, to me this violence to to me is despicable and I hope at some point or another cooler heads get prevail and a lot of laws get passed. And I can relate to that a lot because here in my backyard, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was a victim of that mass shooting. And it's just too bad that these things continue to take headlines for all the wrong reasons. So, you know, I know we're talking about Memorial Day, but I think all of us can agree that we want to pay our deepest respects to those that lost their loved ones over in this massive shooting. So any of you guys want to add to that? No, we just had uh, one, as uh, most of you know, a couple months back in Oxford, Michigan. Uh, four high school students were killed by uh, a gunfire of a fellow student. And uh, so I agree with you, Scott. I mean, we just got to get a handle on this. We got to make sure that this nonsense stops and uh, we got to uh, calmer heads have to prevail. It's just uh, sad that we have to go through this constantly and to think of those innocent lives of those little children and plus the two adults, including one of the teachers that was killed is just despicable, like you said, and uh, this bloodshed has got to stop. Yeah, Steve, JB, anything you have to say about this whole thing? Well, I just think, uh, you know, the media needs to stop you know, telling us all about the, the person that perpetrated this. I mean, the, I, I, I'm so tired of hearing about its mental illness. He wasn't that mentally ill that he didn't go with body armor and a weapon. I mean, they tell us about the victims. Tell us nothing about the person because who cares about him, honestly? And, you know, there, there's a problem in this country, I believe, and – I think it stems from there's such a lack for the respect of human life around here. It's like whenever something goes wrong in somebody's life, the first thing they want to do is go kill a bunch of other innocent people, which to me makes absolutely no sense. So, I mean, that's my two cents. No, I'm glad you voiced it, Steve. If there's a, everybody I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to hear about this guy and his problems, you know, um, I, that's what I think the media needs to stop giving these people their 15 minutes. I mean, you can say the guy's name and that's, uh, that's all I care to know about because as far as I'm concerned, he was a scumbag. I mean, you know, you're going to go kill what elementary school students are eight, nine years old. I think it's disgusting. And by the way, we want to thank Fernando Vargas, who is joining us via LinkedIn. So, Fernando, hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend, and thanks for be, uh, joining us. And, JB, give you the last word on that before we talk about Memorial Day weekend and what it means to everybody. But before we go to you, JB, I want to let everybody know that you can find a sports exchange on our website, www.southfloridatribune.com. You can find it on our South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. Please go out there and subscribe to that as well as iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and, and wherever you get your podcast, So you can find it there. If you're watching on YouTube, we have a lot of the information available. So, again, you know, you can find it on YouTube, South Florida Tribune, as well as the website and Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, and wherever you get your podcast. So with that said, Jay, being uh, they got the promotional stuff out of the way, what, tell me uh, 
your Cliff Notes version of what just took place and how disgusting it really truly is. Listen, I mean, it, I remember society when you used to be able to go to the supermarket, send your kids to school, be able to take the subway, and not have to worry about, you know, innocent people getting killed. And there's definitely a problem. You know, someone has to step up. Something has to be done because it's unacceptable. It, it's this. I mean, hearing this one day is too much. We just went through this last week with Buffalo. And before Buffalo, what did we go through before that? Not that long ago. It's horrible. These are, and in this case, it's innocent children and teachers. It, there's no reason for this ever. And, you know, some, somewhere along the line, someone has to be man or woman enough to step up and try and figure out a problem, figure out a way to solve this problem, because it's just pathetic and sad. Well, I know yesterday, Steve Curley, Golden State Warriors, Coach had a lot of choice words for what's going on. And, you know, he had a little bit of a rant, and he was certainly trying to get things off his chest. The only thing I'll say about what Steve did, more power to you, Steve. I'm glad that somebody showed passion and energy. And, you know, he wore his heart on his sleeve, and rightfully so. So, Steve, you know, I'm definitely a fan of yours, what you did before your team's game, because everybody's sick and tired of the rest in peace and all the condolences and all that for something totally unnecessary. So wanted to kick off the show with that. So now we're going to go to J.B. Ellis, who's the youngest guy of this whole group. Let me talk about the big of a foursome. He definitely is. So I'm not going to any but we'll start off with the young. Oh, well, I we can't saw you, child. The young adult of this <laughs> group here. So J.D. J.B. Excuse me. What does this holiday mean to you? And so and you the know, part of the question: Does it involve sports? So I mean, sports sports is everything. With you know how I live, but. More importantly, Memorial Day, you know, is to remember the fallen soldiers that without them, we wouldn't be here. We'd probably be speaking German or Japanese or maybe even Russian at this point. You know, they gave their lives for their country so that we can have the freedoms that we have. And, you know, as much as we all complain about, you know, how at times America doesn't seem to be like what it could be, you know, without them, we wouldn't be here. And then, of course, you know, it's a great opportunity to hang out with family and friends because you get the extra day off. And there's always playoff basketball and baseball. So if sports is always involved, they, they've learned how to capitalize on uh, our free time. Anything else that you want to say about Memorial Day matters to you? What are some of your favorite memories that you've done over Memorial Day weekend? Uh, probably a bunch of Knicks playoff games back in the day against Chicago go to a Yankee game and then listen to the Knicks game on the radio on my way back, try to get home to catch it before they, or my heart got broken and they lose to the Bulls and the Heat time after time after time. <laughs> well, let me tell you what, I remember when the Knicks, the Knicks were taking on the Pacers too, and there was a really nasty uh, Knicks going on over there too. Reggie Miller, if I remember right, didn't he give the choke sign? And he, there was no... Uh, it's a, it no, wasn't it John Starks he gave it to? Yeah, right. Yeah. So a little bit of... Uh, well, I think what was so interesting about Indiana against New York is you're talking about two totally different areas. We know the Big Apple has its reputation. And then, of course, Indiana per se, you're talking about, you know, a basketball haven out there. So, you know, Midwest versus hard Northeast... I don't know any other way you can compare New York and Indiana except that. Not at all, yeah. No. All right, we're going to move on to Steve Ballesteri. You know, I'll let me uh, preface the fact that Steve Ballesteri has been in the military, so you're the military veteran of our crew. So why don't you go ahead and give us some of your favorite highlights of Memorial Day and the weekend, per se. Yeah, um, after a career in the military, I mean, Memorial Day was big for us every year because that was our time to give back to the people you made the ultimate sacrifice. So, uh, you know, uh, every year we'd have ceremonies on whatever base I happened to be stationed at at the time. And, you know, we'd have usually have a parade of some sort in there. And that carried over. Uh, I was very involved with the veteran community after um, I retired. And, you know, when I was living up in the Boston area uh, on the week prior to Memorial Day, a bunch of us veterans uh, from the local town, we would go visit all the schools in the area. Uh, the schools would put on, you know, their Memorial Day uh, ceremony uh, in the school, and then uh, they would give us a chance to talk with the students. And it was great for us and them because we had guys from, 
you know, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, into the modern day. So the kids all got a, a great perspective. And um, the last couple of years I was up there was it was a really good thing. They would pair a couple of veterans up and we would go in different classrooms and it was a question and answer period for the kids. And they would ask you about your own experiences. And, uh, and some of the questions were hilarious. You know, this one kid is, he was look like, I'll never forget him. The, you know, the old jokes about little Johnny Jones in school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could tell this was little Johnny Jones. And so, uh, you know, he was at the back and the teacher didn't want to call on him because I guess he had a, already had the reputation. And finally she did. And he was like, I, I got a question for him. He was pointing at me and he said, you were a Green Beret? And I said, yeah. He's like, what was the grossest thing you ever ate? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, man, I've eaten some pretty gross stuff. But, you know, and the kids all got a kick out of it. But no, uh, it was... Memorial Day, and then, you know, we would visit the schools. We would have our own ceremonies all through town in the different uh, uh, cemeteries. And, you know, it was our chance to give back uh, for those who, you know, didn't make it home. So it's uh, always been a personal thing for me. Growing up, you know, my father and all my uncles were all in the military. And then having a military career for me, I mean, it was... Memorial Day, you know, it was taken up with parades and ceremonies and visiting cemeteries. So it didn't really um, involve much sports for me. But, um, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, you you get home and, you know, something is usually on the Red Sox or, or like the Celtics in the playoffs or sometimes the Bruins in the playoffs. And. Uh, you know, when you then you get home and you kick back and you're watching the ball game. And, you know, again, like JB said, I'd like to reiterate that a lot of people complain a lot that, you know, we haven't reached our potential. But I've been to 42 different countries and I'm here to tell you we're the best, most imperfect union there has ever been. Uh, you know, we're we're still a work in progress, but. There's no place I'd rather be. So, t so Steve, tell the audience exactly what branch of military that you served in. Yeah, I was a uh, Army Special Forces. Uh, I started as an NCO, became an officer later. Um, I in the Seventh Special Forces Group, and you know I, I served for 17 years before injuries resulted in me being put out before my 20. But you know. I, I loved it. Uh, you know, being a Green Beret was, you know, the ultimate for me. I got to travel all over the world. And, you know, we worked in tons of different places, met great people. And I loved every minute of it. I wouldn't trade a minute of it for anything. And, you know, we lost people along the way. And that kind of work, you always do. And unfortunately, uh, the, the wars never seem to stop. We always have another one, and I feel for the guys that are out there now because they've been doing it for 20 straight years. Yeah. So tell me what it was like to actually serve in the military during Memorial Day, knowing that you know the significance, Steve, of the holiday itself, but yet you're still in the military, knowing that you yep. can only hope and pray that you're not one of those yeah. individuals yeah. and that you're able to walk out on your own power, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that's interesting because, um, you know, uh, we we had a great deal of respect for those who, who made the ultimate sacrifice, but no one wanted to be uh, listed in one of those names, obviously. Uh, the funny thing was we loved going to the ceremonies, uh, going to the cemeteries and all that. But I think by and large, we hated the parades. I hated marching in a parade. <laughs> But being in the military during Memorial Day is is a moving experience, um, you know, because there's so much uh, history there and there's so much respect there because all of us know, you know, uh, what what all that entails. And, you know, it, it's about the guys who didn't come home and forever young, as they always say. Uh, 
but um, yeah, I think there was a great deal of respect there. And, you know, I, the history that's involved with it all the way back is it started right after, the, I believe it was right after the Civil War. So, you know, and unfortunately, like I said, uh, the wars never stop. And, you know, we might get involved in another one real soon. So, you know, but we always have people standing ready to serve our country, protect our way of life. And, you know, we, we have a total volunteer force. I mean, nobody is drafting anybody anymore, uh, unlike what you're seeing over with the Russians and the Ukrainians. And, you know, I feel for the Ukrainian people. They've, they've been invaded by Russia throughout history more times than you could count. And, you know, now they're fighting for their existence again. And it's just horrible over there, as you can can imagine well we know you being from the boston area it's safe to say the celtics and the bruins kept you busy over memorial day weekend <laughs> yeah. well, the fact that well it's it's oh. always good if you know if the bruins are still playing at this time of year it's usually a good sign right uh, and we all know that the celtics to me are, are always playing at this time and i have to say uh uh whether it's a popular opinion or not i actually do hope that they uh, win the nba championship uh the a lot of people in would like to see them overtake the Lakers 18 to 17, but that's a subjective opinion. I got it out there. And you talk about wars out there. And I'm not one to get too political here, but I've had family members that have served in Vietnam. And I'm going to tell you, you want to talk about the most underappreciated uh, war heroes out there. And again, perhaps subjective on my part, the folks in Vietnam do not get the proper recognition that they deserve. Agent Orange to me is a swear word. But I've had family members, and I'm not going to turn this into a political show. It's more about honoring the veterans. But when we talk about the topic of wars, I think the people in Vietnam should definitely get their respect and not their disrespect. So, but yeah, but, and you know, you mentioned that the the guys who all trained me when I became a Green Beret, the guys who trained me were all the the Vietnam vets, and oh, yeah. and you know, we looked up to them guys as. Uh, you know, I thought those guys were like giants, you know, in our in, in our line of work. And they were incredible. And they never got to do that they were so richly deserved for fighting in a thankless war over there. That, you know, we really weren't allowed to win. And again, I don't want to get too political, but, right. you know, okay. it was really tough on them. And then to come home and. You know, the, the country was so frustrated by it. They took it out on the soldiers who came home. And, you know, it's just sad. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We'll go from Steve Ballesteri to George Icorn. George, I guess the only thing I can ask you is what stands out. I know that we've done things together, but we'll talk about individualize it to George Icorn, and then I'll wrap it up with what I've got, and we'll see if there's any closing thoughts. Oh, thank you, Scott. And thank you, Steve, for serving our country. Thank you. My Memorial Day always starts on the day before, Sunday. Um, there's a wonderful Memorial Day concert on the steps of the Capitol. And uh, actors by the name of Gary Sinise and Montoya, they host this wonderful concert. It's an unbelievable event. If you guys, anybody listening to our show out there has not seen it, it's worth your time to watch it on the Sunday before Memorial Day on the steps of the Capitol to honor, and they do a fantastic job. Uh, one of the highlights that they do is they reenact stories and families, and they'll have two actors or one, whatever it is, male or female, depending on whatever the case is, and they'll reenact this story about how Joe was in the army and how Joe was saved by his friend, uh, Steve you know, or whatever the case is, but they do a masterful job. It's a tremendous music. Uh, the National Symphony Orchestra plays, and uh, it's just a wonderful tribute to our armed forces. Um, and like I said, it's on PBS, your, your local PBS station. So I always watch that. Memorial Day itself, yeah, I think our country unfortunately takes it too much for granted. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier, uh, JB, you know, it's a, a, obviously a, a, a extended holiday. It's a day off for a lot of people. And, you know, they have the right to obviously celebrate the way they want to. <laughs> We're a free country. 
Uh, but when it uh, depends upon what kind of meat I'm going to pick out to go on my grill, as opposed to taking a moment or two to remember those who died, uh, we've gone a little bit too far in the opposite direction. Um, I also like to watch the ceremony at Arlington. Uh, usually the President of the United States and the First Lady, and they're accompanied by the Defense Secretary and other dignitaries. And of course, they pay their respects at the Tomb of the Unknown in such a moving ceremony. And then after they do that and play taps, uh, they go into the amphitheater, it's called, in Arlington, and it's packed with veterans and their families. And the president again speaks, uh, well, he didn't speak at the, uh, at the Tomb of the Unknown, so he gets an opportunity to deliver what you would call his Memorial Day address. And I'll never forget a couple of years ago when Elizabeth Dole was there wheeling out Bob Dole in his, his wheelchair. And, you know, Bob, Senator Bob Dole, he's no longer with us. But what a tribute that was to see Bob Dole in his 90s. And he would go to that ceremony almost every year if he could make it physically. That man was something else, I tell you. You know, he never got elected president. But boy, oh, boy, the service he gave to our nation, both in the military and in uh, Congress, was unbelievable. So I think of those things. I think of... Um, like you said, Scott, you know, sports intertwines in that too as well. You know, we've been blessed to have the Detroit Pistons and the Red Wings still playing basketball and hockey, respectively, when they were good, you know, at that time of year. And, of course, our Tigers. Um, Tigers are sometimes home that day. They usually play an afternoon game, and sometimes they're on the road. This, this uh, Monday they are home. They're playing the Minnesota Twins in a day game. Um, but you're right, the, the, the playoffs, and, and Scott, you and I have been privileged to take a trip together on Memorial Day weekend more than once, up to Michigan International Speedway to see the U.S. 500, and then, of course, down to Indianapolis. We'll never forget that wonderful trip we took to cover the Indy 500, and as a bonus, we covered the Indiana, well, we saw the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. So uh, to me, it's a lot of remembering, but yes, it's, it's, it involves sports and those great memories. Great segue, I'm telling you. I got a bunch of true pros here tonight. Not that I don't anyways, but especially on an important broadcast like this. So with that said, I'm glad you brought up Arlington because when I covered the Lions and the Washington Redskins, I did make it a point one time to go down to Arlington, Arlington National Cemetery. Folks, if you haven't been there, you gotta go. In fact, I, I don't know if my wife has been there, but we're going to go there one of these days somewhere up in Tripoli um, in that part of the country. I would love to return back to Arlington Cemetery again. But that said, you know, I'll double on what you said. George, I've been to two Indianapolis 500s, and ironically, Jacques Villeneuve ended up willing, winning one of them and finishing second in the ones. I think Al Unser Jr. was a winner in one of those. I had the chance to see the Indiana Pacers Actually, I believe they uh, played the New York Knicks in one matchup, and I think they played the Orlando Magic. I don't remember, but if you but you talk about the NBA playoffs, it's one thing down at Market Square Arena, but when you go to the parade in downtown Indianapolis, and you've got Florence Henderson out there waving to the crowd, and then you got Jim Neighbors singing back home in Indiana. I mean, geez, if you can't get any more Indiana than that, I don't even know how to do it because those are uh, synonymous names up there. Yes. The U.S. 500 a couple times. I went to Michigan International Speedway. And, you know, what's interesting about the U.S. 500, George, why don't you go ahead and give everybody an overview about how the U.S. 500 became the U.S. 500? Uh, yeah, uh, just briefly, um, you know, championship auto racing teams, CART, we now know it as the IndyCar series. Well, um, they had a simmering dispute with Tony Holman, who was the owner of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Indy 500. And Tony was uh, very tired of the foreign influence. And one of his many complaints he had was uh, the foreign drivers had come out, you know, somehow taken over the circuit too much for his liking. And so there was a break between carts, championship auto racing teams, and the Indy 500 and, and that brand, if you will, that was uh, always on, seems like it's been on ABC forever. As we know, with Jim McKay used to be the host of this uh, broadcast, and uh, it's still on ABC. But uh, the, what happened is uh, it got to a point where it was so bad between the two that they could not come to any kind of agreement. And so Tony still staged the Indy 500 
with a lot of rookie drivers and a lot of Americans, obviously mostly all Americans, and, and some guys maybe even past their prime, and he brought back to still stage the Indy 500. Well, Roger Penske is part of the group that um, used to own Michigan International Speedway, which is a beautiful speedway uh, located in rural Michigan, and they staged the U.S. 500. And, uh, and Scott, uh, you and I had the opportunity to see that race. I think you went to two of them. I only went to one. Right. But, but um, it was really kind of a sad day for, for championship auto racing, an open wheel, because nobody really wanted to see that happen, that, that there was a competition for the IndyCar uh, audience, if you will. And uh, I know it, they could not fill the stands at Michigan International Speedway. They had a good crowd, but they could not co compare to the crowds that packed, what, two, three 300,000, I guess, including the infield at, at International, I mean, at Indianapolis. Right. So that's kind of a little bit of the background on it. There was a competition going on, and they staged two races for a couple of the years. Yeah, nobody out draws Indianapolis. It's a tr tradition, no matter who the heck is racing in it. But, you know, for those of you that haven't been to uh, Michigan International Speedway nestled out in the Irish Hills, it's an unbelievable place out there. You know, and, and, I, and of course, when you talk about auto racing owning Memorial Day weekend, I, I realize baseball gets involved too. Well, let's not kid ourselves. Auto racing, you know, we're going to be doing a show down the road about what sports own a particular holiday, but it won't be tonight. But I tried to get a credential for the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Couldn't do it at the last minute. But I did the next best thing at Charlotte Motor Speedway. I paid $200 to take four laps around the track in an open wheel car so I could visualize what a race would be like, you know, going 600 miles starting during the day and ending at night. And my wife wasn't crazy about the idea of me doing it, not because of the money, but she knows I do have a tendency to live over the edge. And for those four laps, you know, she was a little bit on pins and needles, but she's gotten used to it after a while. So, you know, so, but when you put it all in perspective, yeah, we all definitely can't lose sight of what Memorial Day means in so many different ways. And when you put a button and bow on this whole thing, Steve, I love the stories that you provided, the military part. And JB, obviously, you know, everybody on this panel brings something to the holiday. What, you know, and I realize that it's not a day you're going on a diet, that's for sure. I have a feeling that the grills are definitely there. So if you're looking to lose weight, it isn't going to be. There's two no. holidays you don't lose weight, Thanksgiving and Memorial Day. But Yeah, we always make way too much food at the end of the day. No and, kidding. Yeah, but, you know. And that's, you know, that's part of the, uh, that's you know, part of the. Tradition. You know, the tradition. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then. Uh, myself, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only veteran that does this. After we eat, I pour myself a good stiff drink and pour one for the guys who couldn't be there. There you go. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't discount the fact that I used to love those three-day weekends because I was always on the road somewhere, <laughs> right, George? I mean, yes. you know, I, being a travel guy like I am, if there's a way that I can get a three-day weekend, you know what I would do? I would go ahead and drive in the middle of the night, the night before, and I would maximize that 72 to 96 hour window and go somewhere. And when I went to my first Indianapolis 500, I was in such awe of the whole thing. I drove down to Indianapolis to see practice a couple of weeks, then qualifying and then the race. And then the following year, I got smarter and took flights down there a little bit because it was just too boring of a drive from I-94 to Indianapolis. But you know what? I got to tell you, Indianapolis, of all the towns, they know how to stage up big events and they can handle multiple events between the downtown area as well as the suburbs where the Indianapolis 500 is. So, yeah. you know, I know well, a lot. Of I, I have an amusing story that, that kind of ties in with the military and uh, you're talking about auto racing. Uh, I'm sure you, you've heard of Rockingham Raceway in, in North Carolina. Yeah, I have. Well, that isn't very far from where, like, um, the Special Forces training is done away from Fort Bragg. It's a place called Camp McCall. Mm, and it's okay. way out in the middle of basically nowhere in North Carolina, but it's not far from Rockingham. Well, when I was an instructor for Green Berets, we had students, most of them who didn't make it, would fail the land navigation test. 
we have them out there and we always tell them you're inside, you know, this swampy area where we're doing this. If you come to, you know, a paved road, don't cross it because then you're out of the area. (laughs) But we would always give each of them a quarter because we invariably knew somebody was going to cross the road and get lost. And if you get lost, if you come across somebody's home or, you know, back then there was pay phones, call and tell the, uh, you know, the the base area, Camp McCall, that you're a lost land navigation student. Well, this one Sunday, all our students were in except this one kid. We we're searching because, you know, we, we had uh, the navigation, they'd have points that they'd have to go to. And each student had his own route. So we knew where the last point he was and where he was going. So we started sending out vehicles looking for him. We couldn't find him. And we're like, where the heck did this kid go? So, you know, we were looking for him for a good two and a half, three hours. Can't find him. And then guys on the radio from back at the base said, you have a lost kid out there? And we're like, yep. Well, he doesn't know where he's at. But he said he's in a big, big parking lot, and it's filled with people drinking beer, and he has no idea where he is. And I was like, I know where he is. He walked 12 miles off the base oh. into Rockingham Racetrack, and he's at the racetrack. So we told the guy, tell him on the on the phone to just stay right where he's at. We'll go <laughs> get him. And when we got there, the kid was half-baked because the people at the, you know, partying after the race we're feeding them beers right it's <laughs> so a great story we great pull up story. here's this kid he's like 12 miles off the beaten path wow. and we're like get in the truck and then and then he's like he's all like staggering we're like are you drunk and he's like oh i had a couple of beers with these people <laughs> oh. <laughs> so needless to say he didn't make it yeah you know, Great. He, he did what we used to call the duffel bag drag back to Fort Bragg and, you know, the, the long face. But, yeah, he uh, he ended up at Rockingham Racetrack. <laughs> Great story. Here we are talking about Indianapolis, Michigan International Speedway. And Steve Ballester, he, uh reach out to my partner in c- crime here to come up with Rockingham. I don't know if I can top that act. And you know what, <laughs> Steve, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. So there you go, folks. A Rockingham reference from Steve Ballister. I've actually been out to Fort Bragg out there. I've been out and it's a pretty neat place out there. It's Not huge. that you can yep. see a whole lot. It's a military base, but you can certainly appreciate what everybody's going through. So, you know what? I'm not even going to try to top that egg. So, you know what? I've <laughs> had it. So, you know, all right. So what I'm going to do is go around the horn here and let everybody have uh summarize any final th- stories and then we'll everybody uh, introduce themselves, uh, how they get a hold of it. And then we'll call it a night. So, all right, George, we'll lead off with you. Go ahead. Any well, final- again, I want to I want to thank all of our servicemen and women that uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice. I mean, that's what this holiday weekend is all about. Um, we've lost way too many, and well, we're not the only country that can say that. We've, you know, been in so many wars, and we continue to uh, have all volunteer servicemen and women. It's amazing that this country uh, continues to defend itself with uh, such great men and women. So, uh, hats off to all of those that are still serving now. And of course, to all those that we lost. Uh, my dad was in the military. Many of my uncles were in the military. I was not, uh, but I have the utmost respect. And uh, thank, thank all of them. All of them have gone on to the biggest sacrifices that anybody could ever make. So I, I salute you all. Thank you. JB? Can't thank them enough. You know, I mean, I have uh, many family members in the military. My dad, you know, luckily, Thank God they all came back. My friend's uncle, you know, I heard stories of him in World War II, um, you know, and it's a shame to see that, but without, you know, everybody's commitment and service, you know, we wouldn't be here. I I can't be anything but thankful for them. Steve, I appreciate everything you did. You know, I'm sure you put a lot of, you had a lot of sacrifices to do what you did. You know, we, I know we definitely appreciate it. and It's great to see. And like you said, it's it's all voluntary at this point, which is amazing to think when we've been in wars pretty consistently over the last uh, couple of decades that it's still just all voluntary. Steve? 
Yeah, it's amazing because, you know, you think back to 9-11 and so many people rushed to join the military after 9-11. And all of those people that joined right after that are now have served long enough to retire from the military after 20 years. That's amazing how that time has gone by. But, you know, if if you don't mind me making a little plug for a couple of uh, foundations that I, I give to all the time. You know, there's a special operations warrior foundation and what they do is uh, members of the special operations community that lose their lives in the line of duty. Uh, they help out the families. They uh, provide college scholarships for the children of guys who, uh, you know, pay the ultimate sacrifice and women uh, as well. But um, and the Green Beret Foundation, which I give to all the time. And they help wounded warriors. They help uh, families of guys who who were killed in action and just two great organizations. And if anyone would like to give to any of those, I definitely suggest you look them up. They're very worthy and um, uh, they help out not just the warriors themselves, but the families, because those are the forgotten ones. You know, when the guy makes the ultimate sacrifice, you know, after it's all said and done. His wife and kids still have to, or her husband and kids have to, you know, get on with their lives. And it's very, very difficult for them. And they're the uh, unsung heroes in all this. Well, for that matter, I'll double up on you. Okay. If anybody uh, wants to give to those respective foundations, go contact us at southflorida.tribune at gmail.com, and I will forward the information uh, for, to you, Stephen, and you have no problem there. I want to mention a few people. My dad served in the military over at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. My uncle Bob actually did serve in Vietnam, and another close friend, father figure, Jerry Weinberg, was also a member of the military as well. But how do I have a show like this without mentioning Pat Tillman, the former Arizona Cardinal, that gave up everything after 9-11 to serve our country only to be killed in a line of friendly fire. So I'm gonna make mention that we wish there were a lot more Pat Tillmans out there who gave up a very lucrative NFL career to serve in the military. And I don't wanna go out there and uh, downplay what other military people have done, but think about the sacrifice, not only did he make financially, but for the country as well. So I feel, a necessary to bring that up and i'm glad that we were able to have a pat tillman and I, I from what i hear there's a statue outside of the cardinals building as well i haven't seen it but i have been outside of that as well so you know what can i say guys we've been able to really talk about something that we're all passionate about that we feel and yeah i do want to thank all the veterans out there that have given everything that they can to make sure that we live in the freedom and the democracy that we live in and we can't say that we love you enough and are more thankful to everything you've done. And, you know, I'm thankful for you guys for joining me on this Memorial Day edition of the Sports Exchange. So what I'm going to do, Steve, I'm going to let you let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter at Steve B, 7SFG, right underneath my name. That's uh, my old military unit, the 7 Special Forces Group. Uh, I write for patsfans.com. I also am a national security columnist for 1945.com. Um, and that keeps me busy, but I'm on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all under Steve Balistrieri. You can always find me on there. Not only that, we get to find you a lot on this network because you're a regular. That's it. We're, we're just now wrestling. I'm part, of, I'm part sport, of the South know. Florida Tribune family. <laughs> well, you are. I got news for you. We got a lot of stuff lined up. We're just trying to make sure you feel a little bit better. But your workload will be up there when it comes to uh, football as well as some other projects that we have lined up. All right, JB Ellis, go ahead. JB underscore the program on Twitter. Sideline Sports on Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. Uh, confidential 11 o'clock Tuesday nights, um, all in the Sideline Sports Network, where you can watch it right on my Twitter, JB underscore the program. That's about it. George Icorn. Yes, uh, uh, here in the Metro Detroit area, you can reach me at Twitter, SNG Sports 99. Also, I'm writer, writer for the Detroit Monitor newspaper and uh, guest on uh, Fire Up Michigan with Scott Morgan Roth. And I'm the author of a book about Detroit sports broadcasters. It came out several years ago, and you can get a copy of that 
Uh, there's a link on the South Florida Tribune website. And uh, Scott, you're featured in that book. And so are so many other great sportscasters like Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Van Patrick, Ray Lane, and Jim Brandstatter. Well, good segue, George, because the Fire Up Series, Florida, Michigan, will have a new night as it moves from Monday nights at 930 uh, starting at, on June 6th. So look for us also at www.southfloridatribune.com, Twitter at Tribune South, and, of course, you can subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, and you can find these shows on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, wherever you find your podcast as well. And, and I should also point out that we have another series that will debut called Fire Up Wisconsin, so we're looking forward to letting that one out there as well. So, so we have a lot of good things that are definitely lined up as well. And, you know, I do want to give one last shout out before we call it a night. I want to thank Candy Ebling, who does a remarkable job with the website. She does a magnificent job doing the website, putting it all together. And more importantly, she does an outstanding job to make sure all these shows are put up there properly. And without Candy Ebling, we couldn't get this production done. And by the way, a little sneak preview there. Candy Ebling is going to be one of the primary hosts on fire up wisconsin so you know what candy may be in the background today but she can be in the background a whole lot longer she won't be behind the curtain for much longer <laughs> no 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 i tell you she's graduated from photographer she's going to be a broadcaster and i think everybody out in wisconsin will be better of it but meanwhile we want to thank everybody for joining us on this edition of the sports exchange our special memorial day edition and again, if you want to reach us also, South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. Mentioned it to you earlier. And I also uh, want to encourage you to subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our dynamic, outstanding, I guess I'm a little bit modest and biased towards our own operation, but we work very hard to make it as good as we can. So with that said, on behalf of George Icorn, J.B. Ellis, Steve Ballastery, my name is Scott Morgan, we the Motor City Madmouth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Sports Exchange. And stay tuned for updates with other shows in the works. So good night, everybody. Happy Memorial Day. More importantly, enjoy the food, but please be safe. And once again, veterans, we love you very much. And thank you for the freedom that we have out there. And, and once again, on closing note, I want to pass along our condolences for those victims that were fatally injured in that unfortunate shooting. Good night, everybody. God bless. Good night.